In the previous three videos, we've looked at creating a random hex color string in exam reference language or OCR exam reference language or pseudocode. We then looked at how to different ways to get a random hex digits and we converted that code to Python. And in the third video, we converted that code to Visual Basic. In this video, we're going to then do a simple conversion from the exam reference language or pseudocode to C sharp. And I suspect that not many schools are using uh, C sharp. However, um, I have taught students um, using C sharp. And there are a number of little gotchas when we are converting this to C sharp, particularly when we think about the code and the, its similarity to the code that we just had working in Visual Basic. So all I've done again is copy and paste the pseudocode into this uh, bare uh, C Sharp console application. As I did with the Visual Basic, I'm just going to take these and put them into here. And then what I'm going to do is that we will need to make remove the word function. And because we're in a static um, void or we're calling it from static void then I'm going to have to go static and this is going to return a string so static string and in this case we're going to use curly braces and I'm going to copy uh, this code here because we don't need the end function so in a similar vein as to the video three, we want to say string lookup, and we want to use that lowercase, and we mustn't forget our semicolon in C sharp. Uh, this is going to be an object or random object, so we're going to say random, and we're going to follow the same pattern. Object is equal to uh, the new random and in the same way that we could type is we also want to then say that our um, it's an integer and we call that R and D is equal to our random object dot next and not to 15. And you'll notice how similar, if you've looked at video 3, this is to the um, Visual Basic code. And so in this particular case, our hex digit is again is a string. Technically it's a character, but we're simply using a string of length 1. And we're now using a lookup. And what is the issue here? Let's just first of all understand what's going on here. If we hover over this, cannot convert char to string. And that's the point that I was making, is that in reality, this returns a, uh, this returns a character from that string. And so we have to know, do what's known as casting or conversion and we can simply tell it to do a string however one of the more easier ways is just to go use the to string and that will cast it to a string and then we're returning that hexadecimal digits now now we're going to do here and we're going to say static again this is oops static and it's going to return a string and we want to use our open and closing curly braces i'm going to put that into here and remove that so again this is a color string it's a string so we're using that uh, now in c sharp we certainly don't have a for loop in the same way we can say for brackets um, int c is equal to zero c is less than six so that will go not one two three 
four and five and then we want to increment c on each count and then we can do these two things twice we don't need that and we're going to finish this up in a minute so again our digit is going to be a string so we're going to declare that as a string and then we simply are concatenating we just need to remember our semicolon and we need to remember our semicolon here you'll notice that this is giving us a red squiggly line and so this code is very similar again this is a string so we need to declare that to be a string and just in exactly the same way as visual basic we can write console dot write line and don't forget our semicolons and so this code is very very similar to the visual basic uh, except for the way that we do a for loop and instead of saying dim digit as string we simply use the data type so hopefully that should work given that it's the code is almost identical so let's run this code now and see what we get and there's a problem uh, for, for some reason in c sharp it wants to just close the console app down so all we can do here to prevent that from happening is just do console dot uh, read line and that will simply wait for us to press enter before it closes so let's try that now and this time you'll see that we get all the same number if i run it again that was all fours this time it's a different random number but it's the same number for each of the six characters and just to prove it i'll do it one more time and that's strange because we're using the exact same code in that we're generating a random object and using the next method on that so what's the problem well if you go to video three we talk about a seed and a seed effectively determines the pseudo random nature so if i use a seed of one then every time I run this program, if the it might be one three five seven as the random numbers, um, and if I then run it again, it will be one three five seven every time. The way this works is it uses a time stamp or the timer to determine the seed. So if there's a long time between two calls to random, the seed will be very different, and therefore it will appear to be pseudo random. However, given the speed of this computer and C sharp, this is not going to work. And so we have to generate a random object outside of this loop. So we can either move this out into here. And then what we can do is see what the issue is here. And of course, because this is a static method, I have to declare this as static too. And now you'll see that code is just fine. So if I run this now, you'll now see that we are in fact getting a random uh, sequence of digits, 1C2. Let's try running that again. Uh, thing. So if you're using C sharp, beware of that gotcha. How else could we do this if we don't want to make this a static global uh, variable within the um, within the class? What we can do is we can move that into our get hex color function and we can declare it outside of the loop here. And then what we can do is we can take in um, a random and call that random object and pass that random object to this function so if we try running that now we'll see that we get this same um, or it's now that it's working so it all depends upon whether you want to have a 
a permanent uh, global variable or whether you want to generate that inside of here and then send that to your random uh, object uh, sorry send that to your function as the random object so just remember there is a little bit of a getcha when or a gotcha even when dealing with random numbers inside of a a, a loop in c sharp so i'm hoping that that's assisted you in how this works how to convert that to c sharp how to deal with data types how to look at issues with uh, random numbers and how to ensure that we can convert this code and um, you can see that there again there is not a huge amount of difference between exam reference language and c sharp or vb or python the key is video one understanding the logic understanding the algorithm and that's why we focus a great deal in computer science on algorithmic thinking because if you don't understand the logic if you don't understand the algorithm then you're certainly not going to be able to write the code to do that once you've got the pseudocode or you understand the steps the actual code itself whether it, whatever language it is is always very similar if all you came here for was to look at how to convert the pseudocode to c sharp then feel free to go um, for those of you that didn't quite understand the issues regarding random and pseudo random and seeds I thought I would just add this to the end of the video so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this code here and I'm just going to for the moment I'm going to just put that into here and going back to what we had before I'm just going to generate this random number and I'm going to just console dot write line that random number and what you will see is at the moment I'm not putting any seed in here and so let's just also don't forget to when this is finished console dot read line just so we can keep the console open and let's see what happens when we run this and we get 2 9 10 13 1 and 6 and if you remember that we've taken this random object outside of the loop but if I put this inside of the loop then let's see what happens again we get the same number every time and then we get the same number every time so let's just take this back outside the loop but this time I'm going to give it a C value of 1000 and I'm going to run this code and you'll see we get 2311.10.6 2311.10.6 so I'm going to run this code again and you'll see we get 2311.10.6 I'm going to run this again and guess what we're going to get 2311.10.6 so the point is, is that this is not a random number generator what this does is it generates a sequence of numbers based upon this seed value so if I change the seed value just to be 1001 you'll see that we get 1076324 and guess what if we run this again we're going to get 1076324 so if you're making a game for example and every time you want the exact same sequence uh, um, of events every time then you would see that it's with a static number like a thousand or number if you make that a timestamp well every second the time is changing and therefore the seed will change 
every time you run this program and so the point is is that a it is not a random number generator it is a pseudo random number generator that for a given seed will always give you the same set of numbers and the way that we get make it pseudo random is by providing some form of random seed which in this case is a potentially the time which is changing and that's how we can make it appear as in this case if we now use the without any parameters we get 10 4 3 12 and we get a different set of numbers and that's because what that's doing internally is saying let's set this to be a the time and that changes every time we run this code so that's why you have to be very careful with random numbers because you, we don't have such a thing as a truly random number generator and of course you can use that seed to your own advantage in that if you want a character every single time to follow a specific set of um, actions if you seed it then you can guarantee that those exact same actions will occur uh, every single time that you run the the program or every time your user uses the program so I hope that's been a little bit of information on the uh, gotchas regarding at uh, random and seeding and why we need to do what we did to make that work